Jessica Goodrich. Hi, Jessica. Hi, Bart. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Welcome back. Well, thanks. Thanks think, for having me back. Yeah, since the last time you were here, you've had some events. The uh, the run, the yes, walk and run. Yep. How'd that go? Very successful <laughs> event. Um, we had beautiful weather, um, just as we had hoped. And we had 243 runners come out that morning, and it was um, the most we had ever seen. And a good time was had by all, I think. Yeah, so. nice. Well, it looked, uh, looked like everybody was having a good time. Yeah. And, uh, you can see photos on our photo galleries of the day's uh, events and activities. Yeah, beautiful photos. Yeah, well, it was a beautiful day. Of course, it's a great spot. And we've always said, you know, I think everyone that goes to Hidden Lake Gardens any time of the year, they, they always say, oh, I can't imagine what this place looks like in the in fall. In the fall, yeah. <laughs> that's always the, it is beautiful all year round, but in the fall, there's something extra magical about it, for sure, so. Are the colors already starting to turn? So they're just, it's kind of like anywhere. We still have a lot of green, and you're starting to get those subtle hints of red and orange. Um, here, These are some photos from the fall last year. Um, so we're not quite there this year, but we really think over the next week, we're each day we're seeing a little bit more color. And ideally, by October 19th, our fall foliage festival, we will be at peak. Um, last year, it peaked right around that between the third and fourth weekend of October. So we specifically targeted that time of year, hoping we'd hit the best color. I think you're, I, I've been looking at less, uh, I've been looking at some calendar dates and some pictures from last year. We're a little bit behind last year. Yeah. So that that's good for so you. So we'll see, yeah, right. Yeah. Cause we don't, you, you never know. Sometimes it comes on quick and then it all goes away with a big rain, but it's looking pretty dry over the next the next uh, week or so so we should be in good shape and we're looking here at our um, lady of the prairie where we will have our traditional fall scarecrows out for the fall foliage festival they're just starting to be put out now um, she was a featured scarecrow last year and very popular um, and she's back again looking better than ever so so it's exciting cool so the fall obviously seeing the the color the foliage that's the highlight but you've got a bunch of other things going on throughout fall and at the Fall Foliage Festival. What are some of the uh, happenings? And we can see hints of some of that stuff in the, the photos. In the photos, yep. So the festival is running two to eight. This mm -hmm. year, Fall Foliage Festival is a traditional festival held in the gardens for years and years. Um, I actually do not know how many years it has been held. It's gone on for that long, um, but we have not held it since the pandemic. So we're excited to bring it back in a new way. And we have a lot of activities um, that you can come to one or all. We have the day structured that you can spend the whole day or you can just come for part. Um, but we kick off the day with a plein air painting workshop um, sponsored by the Adrian Center for Arts and you do pre-register for that. Um, while that's going on, from that is from two to four. From two to five, we have a lot of just family fun activities, hay rides that will take you up to the skywalk um, and all around the garden, give you a good fall color tour. Mm -hmm. um, we also have what we call garden explorations, which includes a scavenger hunt. And um, and also you can find all of the scarecrows throughout, which I mentioned previously. And we have some really fun fall crafts going on in our garden room that day. Of course, the, the skywalk is gonna be beautiful to uh, walk oh, yeah, across yeah. there and see. Yeah, that's a must see and you can go during the day, but we're also, hosting our pumpkin luminary trail that evening. So it's a self-guided walk from the visitor center out to the skywalk. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll be lit with pumpkin lanterns the whole way, like you see here. Um, and this is very similar to events that we held last winter. Um, mm -hmm. But the difference is with the weather, we don't need to limit attendance. So <laughs> <laughs> you hope. Right, yes. right. Well, it looks like, uh, I know it's ways off, but if the mild weather continues, it should be. In great shape. Good, yep. You yep. usually don't get to go to um, Hidden Lake Gardens at night. Exactly, you? yep. So we're extending the hours for this festival, which I think will be a huge draw for people. Um, we're also hosting a Haunted Michigan presentation at five in our auditorium. So if you like, you can get a little spooked and then go out on the <laughs> pumpkin trail. But the, otherwise, the pumpkin trail is not scary. It's just going to be beautiful with the glowing luminaries all the way to the skywalk. What about food? Food, we do have quite a few food vendors coming. Um, we have Big Nutrition, which will be offering sweet treats. We even have Dippin' Dots. And we also have a barbecue vendor, sweet, a sweet 
I lost it was Sweet D's, I believe, and then Cindy Lou's Kitchen, who offers salads and wraps and smoothies. So we'll have lots to choose from. Nice. And the hay rides, how do you do that? Do you have uh, a, a, a hay wagon or what? It's, it's two different um, tractor pulled trailers filled with hay. It's like fun. It's always, always very popular. Yeah. And um, we also have the Saline Fiddlers coming at three. They're doing two performances at three and four, and they're a dynamic group. Um, they tap while they fiddle, and it should be very fun. It's in our gazebo garden. <laughs> They tap, tap dance? Yes, yeah, oh. they dance while they play. So we're really excited to welcome them to the garden for you're, the first time. You're gonna have to pay them double. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. <laughs> now, is there a cost? There, the only cost is just our normal entrance fee. So um, the only additional cost would be if you register for the art workshop, the painting okay. workshop, but otherwise everything is included with admission. Nice, but if you're a member. It's free. It's free. Exactly, right. So a good reason, this would be a good reason to join. It would be a great yeah. reason to join and then you can have an excuse to come back. Yeah, now the plein air, uh, I don't even know if I'm saying it right. Uh, I'd never correct. heard of it until this year, but it seems like it's all the rage. It is all of a sudden, I've heard about it quite a bit and it's, it's just all about, it, it literally translates to painting in fresh air. Um, so it's just all about exploring your creativity. It's not the type of workshop where you're being guided to all paint the same painting. You'll be picking what you see and then painting it and really exploring your creativity. So yeah. it's a fun opportunity for those that are interested. People will be just scattered around the grounds painting yeah. whatever they want. Yeah, and they will be led by ACA's 2D director. So, so there's guidance there for mm -hmm. those who haven't done it before. <laughs> um, but anyone interested in any of this should go to our website and check out all these activities are detailed on there at hiddenlightgardens.msu.edu. Looks like a fun day. And you know what that day is? It's sweetest day. Oh, I didn't even realize. Yeah. yeah. So it's a perfect chance to go to a date on sweetest day, too. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. There you go. All the events and activities for your date, they're all set at Hidden Lake Gardens. Thanks uh, for all the details, and thanks for coming in. Oh, thanks for having me, you always. Bet. Uh, Jessica Goodrich, Marketing and Publicity Coordinator at Hidden Lake Gardens. Well, Steve Tucker.